Untie it. If I can tie my own tie. What a stupid question. He just likes to play helpless every now and then. Oh, we do the same no. thing when faced with a flat tire. See, that's not it. She just likes to get her hands on me. That's all. Oh. I let her do it. You have a chronic case of egomania. Tell me about it. All this fuss just for my birthday. Just for your birthday? Birthdays are wonderful. Before you're 30. <laughs> Happy birthday, Joe. Thank you. And thank you for arranging this lovely evening. Oh, it's our pleasure. Happy birthday. Honey. Thank you. Mm. Oh, now, tell Boy. me, who is this handsome couple coming down the staircase? Oh, I have no idea, but be? my, aren't they distinguished? What, do you think of my escort for the night? A little short, maybe, but I'm wearing flat shoes. I don't think anybody will notice. <laughs> oh, you look One. lovely, Mrs. Goodman. Oh, One. <laughs> yes, you do, and you don't look so bad yourself. Tiger's had a new suit, huh? Yes, Daddy, it is. Did you take a nap today? Oh, yes, a nice long one. I think he'll last through dinner. You could give Aunt Jody the present now. <gasps> Happy oh. birthday, Aunt Jody. Adam, thank you. Is this from you? It's yes. from me and Aunt Jody. It's from you and no, I'm Aunt Jody. It's from Redmond, right? Right, that's yeah. right. He opened up his piggy bank and he asked me for matching funds. Oh, so. oh clever, <laughs> clever child. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to open this at dinner, okay? Okay. Oh, very good. Did you wrap this all by yourself? Yes, Oscar. Yes. Yes, we are. Send him on up. Okay, Gavin's on his way. Oh, great. great. Well, Adam, this is your very first grown-up dinner in a restaurant. Are you excited? Oh. Do you think you'll have hamburgers? They're going to have anything better. you want. <laughs> the ketchup? Oh. Hello, lovely. Hi. Happy birthday. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, Again. Flowers and a gift. How extravagant. Who's extravagant? I'm a working man now. <laughs> well, that's right. We heard about your directing job in Cincinnati. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations. But I'm going to have a good time this evening. Therefore, I won't think about you leaving. Oh, I don't think you'll have time to miss me at all. What with working at WMON and having Chad do your portrait. Mm. Well, <clears throat> forward march, everybody. Here okay. we go. Yes. Listen, Diva. I'm really getting cold feet about this whole thing. What's the big deal? I'd lose my job if anyone found out I let someone up into the Kavanaugh apartment. Who's going to know? Look, I promise I'll only stay two seconds. And you're going to be with me the whole time anyway, Oscar. Please. Well, okay. Okay, I'll see you later. Well, you folks all have a nice evening Bye. now. Bye, Adam. sounds like a piece of fiction, but it's not. It's the truth. And all these revelations about Skylar are unraveling at such an astonishing speed, I'm not sure I can keep pace with them. But now you're convinced the man named Jefferson Brown was the imposter. Yes, finally. I don't think there's any question of it, Mike. But all the time the first Skylar was in the Whitney house, you never had any doubts about him. Not a shadow. I was taken in completely. <laughs> I've always prided myself on the ability to judge character, to get through to the core of a person. Well, that pride went before a fall, didn't it? Well, Geraldine, you weren't the only one who was deceived. Of course not. There were his business associates, his lawyers, uh, the whole town of Monticello, for that matter. Raven! Yes, yeah, she was duped, like the rest of us. For a time, anyway. Well, she must have been incredibly shocked. I mean, she must have thought that she was seeing her, her dead husband standing there right in front of her. She took one look at him and collapsed. It was partially my fault. I, I didn't do anything to prepare her. But the meeting was accidental and there was no time to warn her. Oh, what an awful moment for all of you, really. What did you do? Well, we finally got her back to bed. And then I called Miles to come and take a look at her. He gave her a sedative, which, unfortunately, was not strong enough. Oh? What happened? Well, Raven asked to see Skylar privately. By that time, of course, she was in a highly emotional state and still suffering from the effects of the medication. I had the feeling that she couldn't separate dream from reality. Skylar told me that she threw her arms around him 
as if he were her dead husband, come back to life. Good heavens. Geraldine, I'm thinking about the legal aspect of this thing. There'll have to be total verification for your nephew to simply take over the estate. Yes, there's a great deal at stake. I would hope that when we start digging into all this, we'll find a number of things to corroborate the truth. Jefferson Brown must have left a trail we can follow, but until all the loose ends are tied together legally, it's going to pose problems for Raven. Raven's whole life is threatened. At least she feels it is. She is absolutely terrified of having to give up all of those things she thought were hers. Mm, excuse me. Hello? Mr. Carr? This is Skylar Whitney. Oh, yes, Mr. Whitney. My Aunt Geraldine told me that she would be visiting with you this evening, and I was uh, wondering if I might take the liberty of calling you at home. Uh, has she told you my story? Yes, as a matter of fact, we were just discussing. Well, as I'm sure you can imagine, the most important concern for me right now is what legal course to take, and, uh, well, I was wondering if I might be able to confer with you. If I can help in any way, uh, I'd be glad to. Uh, tell you what, why don't you join us here this evening? And we'll discuss it further. Thank you very much. She doesn't even know that you exist right up to this moment. And that's why I want you to do me a very great favor. What's that? I want you to give me a chance to prepare her. This is going to be a terrible shock to her, Skylar. And heaven knows she's had enough of that recently. Well, it can't be avoided. Would you mind if I have myself to a drink? No, no, not at all. I know it can't be avoided, but it could be softened if she knows what to expect. I would have told her before, but I wasn't sure she was well enough. Where is she now? She's upstairs asleep. But I can assure you, I can absolutely promise you. Oh, my God. Water and a milk. Milk? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, here's to it anyway. Thanks for the invitation to a farewell drink. That's okay, but uh, you invited me, remember? That makes you the host. Oh, I guess it also means I'm picking up the tab. All right. And remember, I'm still suspended from duty without pay. I mean, you can afford it. <laughs> yeah, well, to hear you tell it. Um, all I got to say is we better drink real slow. Okay. Here's to your trip to New York. Mm. So, uh, how long are you gonna take? Oh, I don't know, a couple of days, I guess. Actually, I wish the whole thing was over already. Yeah. Did you tell Star you're coming? <sighs> no. Oh, it's the old element of surprise, huh? Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I don't really want to surprise her so much. It's just that I think we finally need to face this thing head on, you know? With no more hesitation from either of us. Yeah. Well, that's not gonna be easy, Calvin. What are you gonna say to her? I haven't figured that out. I guess I'm gonna wait for her to tell me about the baby. And if she doesn't, then I'll tell her that I know about it, even if I did promise her friend to keep it quiet. Yeah, it seems to me that what this understudy of hers wants is for you to order Star to come home so she can take over Star's role. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not ordering Star to do anything. Not that that would do any good anyway. But whatever decision she makes, she's gonna have to make on her own. Are you going to be discussing anything else with Star? No. I, uh, I think it's got to be two separate things, Damien. I don't think there's any way I can discuss the baby and Dee Dee all in the same conversation. Good evening. Good evening. May I help you, or would you prefer to browse? I'm Dee Dee Bannister. I'm Vincent Green's attorney. Oh, yes, Miss Bannister. I'm Dwight Endicott. And my daughter's expecting you, I believe. Grace. Lovely evening, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. This is Miss Bannister, my dear. Oh, how do you do? Hello. It was very good of you to see me at this late hour, since you must be so busy at the gallery. Mm. Uh, would you care to sit down, Miss Bannister? <laughs> no, thank you. This won't take long. I just want to clarify a thing or two. First, let me say I did not come here to accuse you of anything related to the theft of your paintings. Oh, really? That was the impression you gave me on the telephone. That was not the intention, I assure you. I hope not, Miss Bannister. That would be absurd. The Endicott name has a long history in art 
for integrity, both here and abroad. I have no doubt of that, Mr. Endicott. It's just that Vince has never stolen anything quite so exotic as fine art before. It seems a little strange that he would change his patterns all of a sudden. But what in heaven's name would give you the idea that we were connected to a small-time thief? Oh, now, don't tell me your client suggested that we had engaged him for some insurance fraud? If he has, he better find himself a less gullible attorney. No, Vincent never suggested anything like that. But while he had admitted the theft of the paintings, he would never say why. Just that he would be in a great deal of trouble if he did say why. Well, I think it's obvious the man is grasping at straws. Mm -hmm. I can assure you, Miss Bannister, we would have no reason to defraud an insurance company by stealing our own paintings. Now, if you would excuse me, I have some things to do. Grace, one more thing about the price for the Canzoni paintings. Don't worry, my dear. She won't have a client for long. Miss Endicott. Yes. I want you to know that I did not come here to offend either you or your father. But I must investigate every avenue that might be of help to my client. Yes. It's quite a common practice nowadays to protect the interests of a criminal, isn't it? Miss Endicott, somewhere in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, there's a line with liberty and justice for all. It's my duty as a lawyer to see that justice is done, and right now I'm just trying to solve a puzzle. Well, you won't solve it here. I know very well that that rotten little thief has convinced you that we're responsible for his crime, in some way known only to him. I don't think you realize that my father has one of the most valuable private art collections in the country. Yes, I am very well aware he of that. He is also a man of considerable wealth. Now, why would he stoop so low as to try to collect a few thousand in insurance in such a petty device as you've suggested? It's absurd. But this gallery is owned and operated by you, Miss Endicott, and it is operating at a loss. Oh, ho, ho, my, we have done our homework, haven't we? Of course it's operating at a loss. Any business in its first year operates at a loss. Frankly, I don't like your insinuations, Miss Bannister, and I don't think I care to continue this discussion. Good night. Good night, Miss Endicott, and, uh, thank you for your time. Hello? Poppy, it's Damien. Oh, it's you. <laughs> How are you? I'm surprised to hear from you, especially after that fight we had the other day. Well, look, that really wasn't my idea. Poppy, I'd really like to see you again. Look, I thought maybe you and I could put some energy into maybe working out our differences. Oh, Damien, I don't know. Come on, look, I, I'd really like to see you again. Well, uh, when? What about right now? I, uh, I, I can't, not right now. What's the matter, my darling? Are you cold? But I didn't know it until after we were married and we moved into the Whitney mansion and then I found some papers and a, a picture. But eventually he admitted the truth to you. Yes, he admitted everything. He told me about the plane crash when he saw that Skylar Whitney was dead, he figured he didn't want to just let the money go to waste. Yes, what a shame. Yes. So we went to the clinic in Lucerne, Dr. Bryson's clinic, and he used the name Jim Diedrichson. Diedrichson? Yes, and he was there three months. That's how long it took to make him look exactly like Skylar Whitney. But he didn't hurt anybody, Spencer. Skylar Whitney was dead. He didn't need all that money. That's it. It's incredible. Mr. Whitney, tell me one thing. Wasn't this confession obtained uh, under duress? I don't know, Mr. Carr. Spencer Varney simply traded one bit of information for another. I mean, in exchange for this, he told Raven what this Johnny Gentry's version of the events were that happened at the Revere penthouse. Events that were faked? That's uh, pushing awfully close to blackmail, isn't it? I mean, I'll give you this only 
if you give me that. Oh, Mr. Carmen, what, what is business? What is commerce? I mean, it may have been a devious way of going about it, perhaps. But how else was he about to get the truth from Raven? I don't think we can judge harshly, Skyler. We haven't heard all the facts. We've heard all the pertinent ones, Geraldine. At any rate, before I recommend any course of action, we'll need uh, independent verification from Raven of the statement she made on that tape. Yes, and then? Then I suggest you hire an attorney and start making plans to contest the ownership of the Whitney estate. Contest? Well, why should I have to contest? It's mine. It's always belonged to me. Perhaps, I don't under but there will be technical hurdles. I think you'll find that there will be legal ramifications. Or you might even think of settling quietly out of court when the time comes. I don't think there's any necessity of thinking in terms of a legal battle. Not now. For Raven's sake, I hope not. All I knew, of course, was that Raven had fainted. I mean, Geraldine had not told me much more than that over the phone, although she did sound very concerned. I, I, did, I didn't expect anybody else to be there. So when I arrived and saw him standing there, it was, it was like a punch in the stomach. The most astonishing likeness to Sky Whitney you can imagine. The man was an absolute duplicate. Nobody had to tell me why Raven had fainted. I'd like to get a good look at this guy myself. Not me. I think I'd faint too. <laughs> and he says he is Skyler Whitney? That's what he claims. Mm -hmm. Only the man we knew was a phony. One Skyler Whitney isn't enough for this world. We have to have another. Oh, we all have such unpleasant memories of him. He sure didn't get any prizes from me. Well, let's just hope that if this man is who he says he is, that he's a very different sort of human Happy being. birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joe. Wonderful. And I'll bet you that Chad will not be able to paint you as beautiful as you really are. This, this whole thing is making me very nervous. This is a terrible thing we're doing, sneaking into a place like this. How can I? I told you, if somebody finds out, I'm going to lose my job. Nobody's going to know. Oscar, I'm just going to look around, and I won't touch a thing. What are you doing? Nobody will be able to see the lights from up here. Oh. <laughs> so this is how the rich folks live. Yeah. Is a painting. Yeah. But there isn't enough light. No, no, Viva, don't! Ah, come on. Viva, don't do that, please! What's it gonna hurt? All right, now you've seen it. Come on, quick! Oscar, huh? will you do me a favor? Go get the elevator. Oh, all right. All Okay, I'm ready. Come on. Come on. Come. Oh, uh, did I mention that I'm uh, getting off around midnight? I'm sorry, Oscar. I have a headache. It's good, man. He picked it out. Oh, it's just beautiful. It's for me and Mrs. Goodman. Well, thank you both very much. You're Doesn't welcome. You're very welcome. <gasps> Next. Oh, I can't wait to see what this is. Ah. Wrapped it pretty well. Nice paper. Got it from Calvin. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's a ring. It's so beautiful. Oh, yeah. 
Is that a moonstone? Yeah, it is. I'm uh, sorry I couldn't get you a diamond, but maybe next year. Oh, thank you. It's beautiful. It's so pretty. In fact, it's funny, but you can almost see things in it. And I'm sure you see a very bright future, Jody. It's one you richly deserve. Get in all right? Yes. I saw the painting and I took a picture. And it's definitely her. <laughs> <laughs>